Mm. Is it the last time that we're going to see the characters from X-Men Dark Phoenix when we saw them? Or is something else on the horizon sooner rather than later? As it seems like WandaVision, we're going to be talking about this for a little bit, so spoiler alert if you're not 100% caught up with WandaVision through episode 5 at this point. Because um, the main actress, one of the main actors on WandaVision, Elizabeth Olsen, was recently asked in an interview if, um, since it's a Disney Plus show like The Mandalorian, if WandaVision would have a similar cameo to the level of a Luke Skywalker, to which she replied, yes. And as the internet is prone to do, it just lit up with speculation, especially given what happened in the most recent episode. Now, unfortunately, I was not 100% shocked by what happened at the end of episode 5 because it had been leaked. Um, there have been some serious leaks that happened and supposedly Marvel's taking like legal action. Um, but I wasn't expecting it in episode 5. It's supposed to be in episode 6 that that character that shows up. So again, massive spoiler alert because in order to talk about what we're going to talk about, we have to dip into spoilers here. So spoilers coming in 5, 4, 3, 2, so, we have a new Pietro, don't we? Um, yes. We have Quicksilver, and I'm not going to lie, I know it wasn't him, but my first thought when you see the back of his head and it's the silver hair, I didn't think, oh, it's Pietro from, it's, it's Quicksilver. I thought, oh, is that Wade from Ready Player One? My brain was just not working that day because like the hair, oh, wow. the haircut looked exactly like the back. The haircut with the jacket looked exactly like Wade's avatar in Ready Player One, and I don't know why that was the first thing that came to my mind. Okay, instead. that's that's hilarious. Um, but it's not Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver. It was Evan Peters' Quicksilver. Which coming back to Dark Phoenix, how disrespectful were they to that character in that movie? It was just, oh yeah, you got injured. You're out for the whole movie. Guys, guys, I'm fine. Tis yeah. but a scratch. Nope, nope, you're out for the whole movie. Uh, you could solve everything really, really quickly, so we're just going to bench you. Uh, but this has opened up a world of possibilities, so that's where we're going to kind of break down this segment of what do we think of the Evan Peters thing? What do we think his role is? And if or who we think this luke skywalker cameo is because there's some thinking out there that evan peters is the cameo like this is holy crap we have a former fox x-men character i'm not entirely convinced that he is the luke skywalker type cameo um but before we get into that michael what was your initial reaction and do you think he's the cameo yeah that that was it's very strange like the way they are doing this show it is it's beyond uh anything like the other it goes beyond any sort of storytelling they've tried to do before and it keeps you guessing and i've had a blast so far because this was the show i was looking forward to the least same like i had i had no desire because the way they marketed it uh and they hid that the fact that hey there is something wrong at least in the initial the initial advertising it's like oh okay like they have powers like it, it honestly looked like it was a joke um and I was like, okay, I, it could be a cute ride, and I'm just like, I just don't want to get involved. But then it's like that's the more they got in the marketing, it's like, wait a minute, this there's more than meets the eye here. Like this, this is it, you know, it kept me curious. So as they've been progressing through the story, when we got to this point, knowing that her her brother is something that she had talked about in earlier episodes, uh, you know, for me, I I do miss the fact that we have never ever gone back with Wanda and she's never talked about it. So I, it has been gratifying as a fan to see her character still deal with that loss. Like, I think it's really important for her. So when I saw the back of the head, I was like, whoa, like they, they really bring back Aaron Taylor Johnson. Of course, then her reaction, you know, her reaction makes it seem like that should be him. But then, you know, but she's reacting with the same type of like shock and awe as if it was him. Of course, then you have Kat Dennings. I think Kat Dennings saying she recast him. Yes, and which so, I thought was a very clever line. Yeah, it is. Yeah, like that. That's very great. And um, I, I don't know. I honestly have no idea what to make of this because, in a way, I'm, I'm somewhat disappointed because I do wish there was some kind of closure there with her actual brother, as, as we know it. Um, so I, I don't really know what to think. Um, and this is where I want to ask you. I want to ask you two questions before you kind of get to your, your thing that you teased me with earlier. Is that one? Why 
do you think they didn't decide to go with Aaron Taylor, Taylor Johnson? And two, I've wanted to ask you this all week. So there's the first question. The second one is, what do you think of all the characters to bring back? Why is Kat Dennington's character back? Because I know you were a huge fan of her. She was literally the worst character in the MCU. Until <laughs> WandaVision. I, I will be man enough to admit when I'm wrong, and I have so far been wrong about what they've done with Darcy. Uh, I still hate what she was in Thor. She's totally pointless. But this... They've kind of like fixed her and remedied her and made her an actual important character to the show, which I really appreciate. Um, first question: Why do you think it was Evan Peters? Right? I, yeah, that's yeah. something I'm still trying to figure out. But no, it can't be an accident because Marvel, you know, they're so known for accidentally doing things and not, you know, strategically oh, yeah. planning things. I don't know. Now, is this just a fake out? Possibly. Um, is I think end of the day, I don't know if this is going to be our Quicksilver going forward. If she's going to miraculously bring him back, uh, and it's now going to be Evan Peters instead. I think they didn't bring back Taylor Johnson because the shock value is bigger. If it's Evan Peters versus Aaron Taylor Johnson, because it's holy crap. It's the Fox version. The one that we know for right. a fact is a mutant. Also, Again, I'm not afraid to say the unpopular opinion. I thought Aaron Taylor Johnson's Quicksilver sucked, and I'm glad he died. I thought his performance was terrible. I remember leading up to it, uh, you had Age of Ultron and um, Days of Future Past coming out within months of each other. And so you had two different Quicksilvers that looked radically different. And I was just like, oh, God, Evan Peters looks terrible because he's got this weird, like, silver jacket and goggles. He looks so stupid. Look at Aaron Taylor Johnson. He's got a blue and silver shirt on. That makes him like Quicksilver. And then Days of Future Past came out with the kitchen scene. I'm like, okay, Evan Peters is hands down better than Aaron Taylor Johnson. And then I saw Age of Ultron. And Aaron Taylor Johnson had that awful accent, which, if you noticed, is slowly coming back for Wanda. And I feel like... It is. Which I like. That's... That's that's character development at its finest. Sorry to jump in here. Like that's really really subtle and it's really cool. I just like there's this tension here. Like she's trying to control things because she's you know, she's trying to bring back Vision, you know, and she's basically saying this none, none of this happened. I'm ex- literally existing in my own bubble. I'm done with reality. Uh, we we destroyed everything. I'm back now. Like we we get it. I just I see her just trying to hold on and trying to grasp. Uh, this reality of that they fixed everything, but they didn't fix her world. They didn't they didn't fix vision. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna you know I guess enslave this entire town. It just didn't make any sense that it's not her. It's not Aaron Taylor Johnson. But if it, she's playing and casting a role, that's where I, I think right before all this happened, she said, you know, as Vision was trying to hold her to account, she was saying, I'm not necessarily in all control. That's where, for me, if she was fully in control of everything and she was trying to comfort herself and reassure herself, then she would have brought back her brother as we know it in the MCU timeline. She would not have brought back somebody else, but then you you have to ask yourself, well, why does she recognize him? So there's something strange going on here. Like Those are the questions I have in my mind. Why does she recognize him? But if she was in control, why didn't she bring back Aaron Taylor Johnson's version? Yeah, I think, again, this is only like the halfway point. Um, but it just can't be an accident that we get a Fox character is the Quicksilver that she brings back. It's not an accident. It's not like they were just like, hey, you, Thomas Middleditch from the Godzilla movies, you're the new Quicksilver. It's deliberately Evan Peters. So that cannot be an accident. Um there's still lingering questions of is the devil Mephisto behind all this? What role does Agnes play in all of this? Uh, there's just a lot of theories going around. But bringing it back to the main topic at hand with the Luke Skywalker level cameo, we're not just pulling that yeah. out of nowhere. That's actually the phrase that's been throwing around. Do you think it's Quicksilver? Or do you think there's a bigger surprise yet to come? And if so, who? Well, you just said it, and I've been trying to find this. This is only the halfway point, five episodes in, so... The fact that this comes now, I mean, I mean, this is the, this is the what climax in storytelling. Now we 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 really hit the high point of like here's the big mid season twist. I would like to think, considering it's only halfway, there's something bigger at play here. Whether it's a reveal of a bigger villain, 
or it's the connection to well, it's going to end up having to be the connection to the, the multiverse of madness here, um, mm -hmm. which again is as a viewer they're going to have to sell it really hard because I'm even struggling mentally to try to keep things like what is actually going on here, what's the actual timeline. So I think they have some work to do with just the general audiences, but I think they have them hooked now. They certainly have the fanboys hooked, but I there's got to be something coming. Like can you imagine like episode ten comes and we're just kind of like well. I guess I guess uh, Quicksilver was the the big the big cameo. Like I I don't see that happening. No, I think there's a couple others. Um, so let's run down some options that I've thought of. Um, and not just All me. Right. There's the the popular names that are floating around generally right now. Um, okay. you've got Tom Holland because supposedly that's gonna be one of the you got Black Widow, but chronologically this will be the next movie. So Far From Home takes place a couple months after this show. And then we know that at least we're kind of getting the vibe that the next Spider-Man will be multiverse related. So whether it's a like a trilogy that starts with WandaVision, then Spider-Man, then ends with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, maybe it's Spider-Man. Maybe it's Tom Holland's Spider-Man. I don't think so because the Luke Skywalker cameo was a shock factor. It was a wow factor. It was a big name that you didn't think would show up on the show. Tom Holland, while he's a big name... I don't think it would be necessarily that shocking if he showed up on a Marvel show because he's a popular Marvel character. That's also why I'm kind of ruling out Doctor Strange because it makes the most sense that Doctor Strange would show up to me because we know Wanda... Uh, I almost said WandaVision is going to be in Doctor Strange. We know Wanda is going to be in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. It's like a collaboration. I come on your show, you come on my show. It's, that's kind of what I get the sense it's going to happen. So, with those two seemingly obvious ones out of the way let's go with four four outside shots um from most likely to least likely and all of these are incredibly unlikely but that's why we're taking these guesses because it can be fun and if they are all of these i think are luke skywalker level cameos number four spider-man but you said not tom holland yeah, that's right. Not Tom Holland. Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. If you want to do multiverse, you open up that multiverse here. If Wanda's creating a rift in the multiverse and basically pulling in everything, and if Spider-Man's supposed to be a multiverse story, there's no better jaw-dropping moment of, holy crap, I need to see the next Spider-Man than that Spider-Man's come back after all these years. Again, out of left field. All these are out of left field. Also, it's convenient that I said four because my next one, Reed Richards, a.k.a. Mr. Fantastic. Now, actually, I probably should have put this one as most likely because we know the Fantastic Four are coming at some point. We know John Watts, the director of the Spider-Man trilogy, is doing this Fantastic Four movie. And here's where I kind of pat myself on the back that I may have been right about something if this turns out to be true. If I'm wrong... I'll come on the podcast and say that I'm wrong. Uh, I have no problem with that. So in um, last week's episode, episode four, when we first meet um, Maria Rambeau, she's walking through the hangar with the director of S.W.O.R.D. and he says, we've grounded all of our, um, uh, what was it? Ast we've grounded all of our astronauts. No, there's been no space missions since the snap. We're still missing some of our people. Well, in my Fantastic Four pitch, which all of you should- Oh boy. All, which oh, all of you right. should watch my Fantastic Four, pitching Fantastic Four in the MCU video. I Bring said it. I said that what would happen and how the Fantastic Four get their powers is they go up into space and all four of them get snapped away in the snap. Then when they get blipped back five years later, they're back on the space station, which is now in the middle of the cosmic storm that gives them their powers. They weren't planning on it, but they also weren't planning on being up there for five years. And since the world is in utter chaos, it's not like S.W.O.R.D.'s going to go up and get a loose space station. So it's probably still going to be orbiting around for five years. And we know that when uh, Professor Hulk snapped everybody back, he snapped everybody back more or less to where they were before in relative safety. So they would be brought back to their space stations. And that would explain his missing astronauts that the director of S.W.O.R.D. teased. That's not the only tease that we got, though, for Fantastic Four. I think it was either in episode four or five. He said, I'm still missing my aerospace engineer. 
tell me that does not sound like one Reed Richards. Now, if you want to get really, really meta with it, um, oh, what's his name? Jimmy Wu is the agent that's worked with Kat Dennings in the show so far. Yeah. This is my real, really conspiracy theory here. Um, he's known for being Asian Jim on The Office. That's like one of his claims, to, one of his earliest jokes and claims to fame before being in, um, uh, always be my maybe on Netflix and other stuff. A popular fan pick was also on The Office in one John Krasinski. I think it would be a fun joke is if he's the lead in to John Krasinski's Mr. Fantastic. Now, I'm that's my m- definitely stepping out there with a leap of faith. But I think we've got our first tease for Fantastic Four. And maybe Wanda's bringing them in somehow or due to the snap. They got their powers. I think this show is setting the stage for the Fantastic Four, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Mr. Fantastic appearance. So, um, if that happens, and that's how they get their powers, calling it, man. That's what I, I've said that for a while. Next. Wanda's father, Magneto, played by Michael Fassbender. We've already got one Fox actor back now with Evan Peters. Imagine she keeps screwing everything up. We never saw what her parents look like. She, th- What if she thinks they died in Sokovia, but actually just their mom died and her father survived and has been in isolation as Magneto? I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Magneto could be this shock cameo character, which would unravel everything. That would be a huge surprise, which leads me, of course, to my number one. And least likely to happen, but would definitely be the most shocking. When all hell is breaking loose, you need someone equally as powerful. Professor Charles Xavier. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Professor X cameo. Like a shock. Yes. X-Men are coming sooner than you thought. Like, Kevin Feige is the king of surprises. I'm sure he's wanted to use the X-Men for a while supposedly he's got like the whole thing mapped out we're not getting x-men for a while i think this is a situation like we had with captain america civil war where they had two scripts one with spider-man if they could get a deal worked out with sony and one without i think that's kind of the same thing that's going on with wandavision they have one script of if the fox merger went through in time we have some x-men if not we have other things happening i wouldn't be surprised if this sets the stage for mutants mark my words by the end of WandaVision, the word mutant will be said in the MCU for the first time, finally. So, yeah, those, those are my four picks. You, you see anything different? Any comments, Michael? Well, there's several comments. Uh, all of those are, in a way, ludicrous in and of themselves and also really, really cool, uh, just to tantalize a little bit. Now, I just want to clarify, all of these people you have... Potential John Krasinski is Mr. Fantastic. Tobey Maguire's version of Spider-Man. Are we actually talking about like James McAvoy's Professor X? Yes. And Michael Fassbender? Okay, so like, okay yes. that's what I wanted to add. Okay. I don't think, as much as I would love Patrick Stewart to come back, right. I also yeah, don't just... want him to come back because Logan was so perfect, and also Patrick Stewart is getting a little too old to be our Charles Xavier. But Sure. Okay, so uh, the, the thing that they have to solve here is that the idea that this multiverse has been open because Wanda is basically taking a whole town, in a way, hostage. What, what, what are what are the purposes of her broadcasting in different genres of television? What, what is the purpose of is she doing that? You think, or is that is that is there a greater narrative at work there? I think it was Kevin Feige and Marvel wanted to have fun and okay relive some childhood sitcoms that they watched. I don't know if there will be a larger purpose for why it's set in sitcoms but maybe maybe we'll find out there's a lot of unknown factors so far on the show obviously okay so so i was i was wondering where 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 you were at with that um let me ask you this then so given what we know so far and that this potential opening of the multiverse has now happened now is there anything that you can see based on them introducing this version of of quicksilver as as her brother are, is is the show going to? Well, do you see the direction of the show kind of getting out of the sitcom thing? Like they're actually going to deal with this reality, and is this something that's going to change Wanda at, at the moment? Like the reason why is like, I'm trying to think of 
what direction are you thinking they're going to go in? Because at this point, I, I have no idea. Because depending on how you answer that, I might be able to give a better estimate on on what is more likely for which character, I guess. I think we will still get some sitcom stuff, but it'll be less and less with each passing episode. Because we had the 80s episode this past week. We're going to get the 90s episode this week. I don't know if we know any um, sitcoms after the 90s. We know they're going up to the 90s, but I don't know if I know if we're going past that or not, or if we're going to be in the 90s for a bit, or if we drop the sitcom thing after the 90s, because if we follow the timeline, like those type of sitcoms really peaked in the late 80s and early 90s, and then kind of, they're still around, but not to the popularity that they were with Family Matters and Full House and all those. So I think we'll get more of the mystery in the coming episodes. It's just we'll still have the the sitcom stuff but okay all right well in, in that case i think if i had to ask i'll give my answer and i'm curious how you'd answer this too so I, I think for the sake of general audience because you know marvel is not dumb they've always made all of their stuff pretty approachable i mean heck my parents and this is not an indictment of my parents they're just not involved or heavily invested but if they can keep up and they can you know keep end games straight then I think Marvel's doing a good job of catering to the majority of people and not confusing them. So I think the least confusing thing would to be would be in my mind is that you would bring in something to connect to the very next thing. And I think the most likely would be a Spider-Man, and it would be on a Tobey Maguire. That that seems more likely to me because mm-hmm. of what's to come next and how connected we already know they're going to be. Mm-hmm. I don't I I don't see them not connecting them so that would be my my money but my question to you is what aside from your your probability high probability of being right because I, I owe it to you uh, you do call a lot of these things what do you think would help the audience out the most what pick do you think like well okay if they go down this direction that would best you know teach the audience where we're going to go instead of confusing them like what character? Yeah, what oh. character being what? What Luke Skywalker? Yeah, for shock and all, yes, but not like, yeah, but wait a minute, like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, we're, they're trying to avoid that response. So, which in, introduction of which character do you think fits that bill of them trying to ease people into the multiverse instead of just like throwing it out there and just confusing them? Dude, it's never good when I have thoughts on the fly, but I. <laughs> I thought this might come with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, but you're getting the wheels turning of how should a casual audience be introduced to the concept of a multiverse? Well, maybe you bring in some actor that you just happened to re-sign his contract recently in one Chris Evans and have him as the Human Torch or an evil Captain America. Or an evil Captain America. In which case, everyone is still fresh with who Chris Evans was in the MCU, but if you say, here's him now, oh, but wait. He was Human Torch or an evil Captain America that immediately gets to people what a multiverse is. And that's, we know Chris Evans is coming back. I said he's coming back for Multiverse of Madness as Human Torch, and I still stand by that. But if you want to introduce a multiverse like you're saying, I think that's the easiest way to do it for a casual audience like our parents who may might not fully get the concept. Like, I had some people... Right. asking me like was the significance of pietro showing up and who like who is this version so exactly. clearly not everyone follows the x-men movies and that's fine they're they're they've always been distinctly separate so i think you need to have somebody that people are familiar with but radically different that's the concept of a multiverse to begin with mm-hmm. yeah okay so based on that i was i was actually going to mention captain america because of those rumors that you know, he had re-signed and he's going to reappear in something. Uh, but they never confirmed, well, I, at least from my understanding, they didn't confirm that he was coming back and reprising his role as Captain America unless maybe they did. I think people um, assumed it. That's why I've always said it's Human yeah. Torch. People assume yeah. that it's Captain America. Yeah, so like I think best, I think maybe Human Torch because of what the significance of Fantastic Four. You're starting to connect a lot of things in together. Um, so... But man, I I don't know. Like this is a this is a monumental challenge. Like this might be one of the most ambitious projects as a TV show. Now I know it's a long game in storytelling, 
because mm-hmm. obviously you got ten episodes. But I mean, it's not like you have ten hours to do this. You're, I mean, some of these episodes are a half hour long. So, uh, I mean, this is this is getting really good. I will say is, I'm I don't know. It's after those first two episodes just hooked me. And like, there's something more. Uh, there's something more that's going on here, and I, I, I am quite impressed. So what's actually going to happen, spoiler alert, guys, because I've seen the end of WandaVision, what's going to happen is we're going to have a repeat of the portal scene from Endgame, and you're just going to get hundreds and hundreds of J. Jonah Jameson's played by J.K. Simmons in various forms. Just go, we want pictures of Spider-Man. Go! And they all just rush into New York to start their own newspaper companies. That's, that's how WandaVision is going to end. But I, now, I'd that, say that jokingly, <laughs> but I well, I wouldn't be surprised if the J. Jonah that we see in Far From Home, which takes place after WandaVision, is a multiverse J. Jonah. Because yeah, that, he looks different than the Sam Raimi ones, which he debuted in with the comic accurate hair and the outfit and everything. He looked different. He looked like Alex Jones. Um, so maybe he is a multiverse J. Jonah, and we just didn't know it from the get-go. Maybe. Uh, We could keep talking about this, but we got to move on or else we're going to be talking about this all day.